want to challenge us with a few lessons uh, from John the Baptist, particularly this one, the first one about Zechariah. Can we be more silent in our lives? We live in a world that has lots of opportunity and sound and movement. We have radios. We have all kinds of devices putting out music and news and weather and programs and all that before us. But where do we have silence in our life? Nine months and eight days. Now, you're probably not going to go after all that time, but can we increase our silent time to be present to God? How can we hear God if there's so much going on around us? So number one challenge, number one lesson from this is to say, what, what can I learn? Uh, what can I, where can I put more silent time in my life and, and be present to God? Number two along with that is, as we heard in the end of the gospel, John the Baptist goes out into the desert. His uh, place of prayer, his, his holy place, his place where he goes to be with God is the desert. Where is your holy place? Where do you go to pray with God? Where is your quiet place in your life? I was uh, with a friend the other day. We were out boating, and, and he took me to a spot, a little cove, that just kind of just, just rose right out of the water and up into the countryside, into the fields. He said, this is my spot that I kind of come, especially if I can be here alone. This is where I come just to be with God. Where is your spot, and do you go to it? I'm going to challenge you as part of this to perhaps make that our Adoration Chapel. Adoration Chapel right outside here and, and in, the, in, the, in the side door over here. Open, doors unlocked from 7 in the morning on Monday morning till about 8 at night. Um, 7 in the morning till 8 at night during the day, all week long, Monday to Thursday. So if you spent an hour there, and maybe the challenge is to use that as your quiet spot, pick whatever hour you can in the midst of that, and, and to go and have that quiet time and presence uh, to our God, kind of that holy spot to go in, as well as any of our churches, but particularly looking for that spot. So where do we go for quiet, and where do we go for that spot? And then also to realize our age as part of it. It doesn't matter how young or how old we are. I one time had to give a talk on uh, women of the Old Testament. Um, actually, uh, sister, there was a nun I was working with. She, we were giving this talk to this women's group in Green Bay, and she was going to talk about women in the Old Testament, and she bailed on the last minute and dumped it on me. So I had to talk about women in the Old Testament. And so I was talking about Elizabeth and also Sarah, who were barren women and in their old age conceived and had a child. And I began with something about, imagine being old, 80 and pregnant. And there was an awe in that group I will never understand. I, I just, I, you know, I'm a guy, I just don't get that. But that sense of that promise that God had fulfilled um, through these, through Sarah, through Elizabeth, as we heard in the gospel, being barren was one of the, it was almost considered a curse from God. They had done something wrong. And so in her old age, to have conceived and, and bear John the Baptist was huge. And so are we open to responding to God, regardless of our age, to bring for, forth the word into the world. And so that challenged us, from the youngest person to the oldest person. So that's kind of the lesson number three. It doesn't matter how old we are, we've got to be going to our spot, we've got to be in that moment of silence. And, and the fourth area I want to char uh, challenge us with in, in looking at John the Baptist and, and realizing his example is that of preparing, of preparing. You recognize that John the Baptist is born um, we're just a few days off of solstice. The longest daylight of the year happened, I think, two or three days ago. Uh, yep, from here till Christmas, folks, it's all downhill. The days are going to be shorter. So John the Baptist, born on near the, near the longest daylight of the year, Jesus Christ born on almost the shortest daylight of the year. One of the lines of John the Baptist, one of his famous lines is, I must decrease so that he, Jesus Christ, might increase. So the sun, at least if you're in the northern hemisphere, decreases from now until the birth of Jesus Christ, the light of the world coming into the world. And then from the birth of Jesus Christ, December 25th, onward from there, the days get longer from that point. So as we recognize that the sunlight going with that, that statement of John the Baptist, we also are challenged in ourselves to recognize, do we decrease so that the Lord may increase in our lives? 
that call to recognize that decrease. Do you realize that in six, six months from today, it'll be Christmas Eve? Yes, are you ready? No, who's thinking about Christmas Eve at this point? I had summer. But I, I want to challenge you as we recognize that decrease and increase, as we recognize that we will gather in these pews on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and six months from now, what will our Christmas look like? Can we begin our planning now and purposely look at decreasing this worldly part, our, our society part that calls us to a wonderful commercial Christmas and increase, purposely reflect and increase our presence of Christ that we want to bring forth this Christmas. To begin our planning, to put our conversation on that note of increasing Jesus Christ for our Christmas. And so when we go shopping for Christmas cards, we don't want to just say happy holidays. Anybody can say that. We want to make sure our Christmas cards are Christ-centered. It's about celebrating the birth of Christ into the world. When we look at our gathering for our families and our friends over Christmas, it's not about just a bunch of parties in Advent. It's about planning, perhaps. We want to adjust our planning to the ultimate is, is coming together to celebrate Christmas in prayer and in worship of our God. Maybe for our family this year, our, our first and foremost important designation is what Christmas Mass are we coming to? Where is Christ in the midst of our Christmas? And that, thus, increasing that presence of Christ and decreasing the commercial Christmas and everything else around it. And recognizing our challenge. As we look at buying gifts, are gifts just speaking of good commercial stuff? Or do the gifts we give speak of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Savior? What could be, as we look at gift buying, I know we're six months for Christmas, we're not thinking that yet, but we're going to start thinking, start watching. Well, can I give this Christmas that speaks of my faith and belief in Jesus Christ? What's the message of myself decreasing and the commercial and the worldly uh, focus in life decreasing and our Lord Jesus Christ increasing? So as we come together to celebrate this feast of Saint, the birth of St. John the Baptist, we recognize his message. We recognize the call that we need um, to, to, to have that quiet time with our God. It doesn't have to be the nine months and, and eight days, but can we have a couple quiet moments each day with our God? Do we have a holy place to go and pray? Perhaps this is the opportunity to try our Adoration Chapel out during the, during the week. And also, as we recognize our longest day of the year, can we decrease ourselves and our focus on the world and increase our focus on the coming of Christ into the world again and again and again. So let us be with John the Baptist for a moment. Let us heed his message. Let us prepare for the coming of Christ.